welcome to the lecture on Virtual Circuit Networks, Frame Relay, and ATM. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the concept of Virtual Circuit Networks. Explain Frame Relay and Wireless Communication. Describe ATM and ATM LANs. Explain the concept of framing. Understand Link Management Ethernet. Explain Local Management Interface, or LMI. Let's start with a brief introduction to virtual circuit networks. Frame Relay and ATM. A virtual circuit is a circuit or path between points in a network that appears to be a discrete physical path, but is actually a managed pool of circuit resources from which specific circuits are allocated as needed to meet traffic requirements. A virtual circuit network, also called a connection network, the sender first attempts to create a virtual circuit to the receiver. A virtual circuit is a connection-oriented, logical communication link between two end systems on a packet-switched network. By packet-switched, it means that a virtual circuit allows data and information to transfer in the form of packets. The size of the packet may vary, and this is the main distinguishing factor between circuit-switched and virtual circuits. Now we will discuss virtual circuit networks. A virtual circuit, abbreviated VC, and also known as a virtual connection or virtual channel, provides a connection between points in a network in both telecommunications and computer networks. The virtual circuit allows packets of information to pass between the two connections. Typically, these circuits are used in networks with fast transfer speeds, such as asynchronous transfer mode or ATM connections. Virtual circuits can also be referred to as logical circuits, and it's important to keep in mind that while the circuit can change its path and connect to different networks or points, it still only connects two points at one time. It determines what two connections it needs to make, and it sets up the best path for a smooth and fast transfer. Virtual circuits are divided into two types. Permanent virtual circuit. This is a virtual circuit that is permanently available. The only difference between PVC and a switched virtual circuit, or SVC, is that an SVC must be reestablished each time data is to be sent. Once the data has been sent, the SVC disappears. PVCs are more efficient for connections between hosts that communicate frequently. PVCs play a central role in frame relay networks. They are also supported in some other types of networks, such as X.25. PVCs always operate in one of the two operational states. Data transfer. Data transfer and data is transmitted between the DTE devices over the virtual circuit. Idle. The connection between DTE devices is active but no data is transferred. Unlike SVCs, PVCs are not terminated under any circumstances if they are in an idle state. Switched virtual circuit. It is a temporary virtual circuit that's set up and used only as long as data is being transmitted. Once the communication between the two hosts is complete, the SVC disappears. In contrast, a permanent virtual circuit or PVC, remains available at all times. A communication session across an SVC consists of four operational states. Call setup. The virtual circuit between two frame relay DTE devices is established. Data transfer. Data is transmitted between the DTE devices over the virtual circuit. Idle. The connection between DTE devices is still active, but no data is transferred. If an SVC remains in an idle state for a defined period of time, the call can be terminated. Call termination. The virtual circuit between DTE devices is terminated. Permanent versus switched virtual circuits. A source and a destination may choose to have a permanent virtual circuit 
or PVC. The connection setup is simple. The corresponding entry is recorded for all switches by the administrator. An outgoing DLCI is given to the source and an incoming DLCI is given to the destination. PVC connections have two drawbacks. First, they are costly because two parties pay for the connection all the time even when it's not in use. Second, a connection is created from one source to one single destination. If a source needs connections with several destinations, it needs PVC for each connection. An alternate approach is the Switched Virtual Circuit, or SVC. This creates a temporary, short connection that exists only when data are being transferred between source and destination. Frame Relay Frame Relay is a computer networking structure that allows for a quick and efficient way to transmit frames from one device to another. These frames, or packets of data, are usually sent between local area networks, or LANs, within a wide area network. The way the frames are sent is like a relay. Data is passed from one router or node to another, then sent to another node or router. Frame Relay provides connection-oriented data link layer communication. This means that a defined communication exists between each pair of devices and that these connections are associated with a connection identifier. This service is implemented by using a frame relay virtual circuit, which is a logical connection created between two data terminal equipment or DTE devices across a frame relay packet switched network or PSN. Frame Relay is a wide area network with features as Frame Relay operates at a higher speed. This means that it can be easily used instead of a mesh of T1 or T3 lines. Frame Relay operates in just the physical and data link layers. This means it can be easily used as a backbone network to provide services to protocols that already have a network layer protocol, such as the Internet. Frame Relay allows bursty data. Frame Relay allows a frame size of 9,000 bytes, which can accommodate all local area network frame sizes. Frame Relay is less expensive than other traditional WANs. Frame Relay has error detection at the data link layer only. Frame Relay Layers Physical Layer no specific protocol is defined for the physical layer in Frame Relay. Instead, it's left to the implementer to use whatever is available. Frame Relay supports any of the protocols recognized by ANSI. Data Link Layer At the Data Link Layer, Frame Relay uses a simple protocol that does not support flow or error control. It only has an error detection mechanism. The address field defines the DLCI as well as some bits used to control congestion. Now we will learn about ATM. Asynchronous Transfer Mode, or ATM, is a switching technique for telecommunication networks. It uses asynchronous time division multiplexing, and it encodes data into small fixed size cells. This differs from networks such as the Internet or Ethernet LANs that use variable sized packets or frames. ATM provides data link layer services that run over OSI layer 1 physical links. ATM is a cell switching and multiplexing technology that combines the benefits of circuit switching with those of packet switching. It provides scalable bandwidth from a few megabits per second to many gigabits per second. Because of its asynchronous nature, ATM is more efficient than synchronous technologies such as time division multiplexing, or TDM. An ATM network is made up of an ATM switch and ATM endpoints. An ATM switch is responsible for cell transit through an ATM network. The job of an ATM switch is well defined. It accepts the incoming cell from an ATM endpoint or another ATM switch. It then reads and updates the cell header information and quickly switches the cell to an output interface 
toward its destination. The last link layer technology we'll discuss in this chapter is ATM, Asynchronous Transfer Mode. ATM is also a packet switching technology, just like Frame Relay, but in contrast to Frame Relay, it transmits packets with a fixed length. Packets whose lengths are fixed, also known as cells, are data packets that only contain basic routing information, enabling special devices, the switches, to forward the packets quickly to their destination. Communication is effected over a point-to-point -point system, which offers a permanent virtual circuit between the computers. Since ATM transmits packets of a fixed length, and with little routing information using the point-to-point -point method, high transmission speeds are achieved. Therefore, ATM also supports the transmission of speech, real-time video, graphics, CD quality audio, and bit rates in the megabit range. ATM networks typically support bit rates between 155 and 622 megabits per second. Let's consider an ATM cell in somewhat greater detail. As we have seen, ATM offers connection-oriented but unreliable transmission services. The responsibility for transmission reliability is taken over by a higher protocol, such as TCP. ATM takes a random size data packet, for example an IP datagram, and splits it up into 48-byte fragments. Then, each of these fragments has a 5-byte ATM header added to it. This total of 53 bytes is known as the ATM cell. The five header bytes encompass a Virtual Path Identifier, VPI, supporting up to 4,096 virtual paths per connection. The 16 bits of the Virtual Channel Identifier can assign up to 65,536 separate virtual channels to each virtual path. The three following bits comprise the payload type identifier. They contain information on the cell type, congestion notification and segmentation. Another bit indicates whether the cell is high or low priority. Finally, the header error check indicates possible bit errors within the first four bytes of the ATM header. It only verifies the integrity of the header, not of the payload. Payload verification is taken over by a higher layer protocol. Problems. Before the solutions to these design requirements, it is useful to examine some of the problems associated with existing systems. Frame networks. Before ATM, data connections at the data link layer had been based on frame switching and frame networks. Different protocols use frames of varying size and intricacy. As networks become more complex, the information that must be carried in the header becomes more extensive. Mixed network traffic. As one can imagine, the variety of frame sizes makes traffic unpredictable. Switches, multiplexers, and routers must incorporate elaborate software systems to manage the various sizes of frames. A great deal of header information must be read, and each bit counted and evaluated to ensure the integrity of every frame. Cell networks. Many of the problems associated with frame internetworking are solved by adopting a concept called cell networking. A cell is a small data unit of fixed size. In a cell network, which uses the cell as the basic unit of data exchange, all data are loaded into identical cells that can be transmitted with complete predictability and uniformity. Asynchronous TDM. ATM uses asynchronous time division multiplexing. That is why it's called asynchronous transfer mode to multiplex cells coming from different channels. It uses fixed size slots, the size of a cell. ATM multiplexers fill a slot with a cell from any input channel that has a cell. 
the slot is empty if none of the channels has a cell to send. Architecture. ATM is a cell-switched network. The user access devices, called the endpoints, are connected through a user-to-network interface, or UNI, to the switches inside the network. The switches are connected through network-to-network -network interfaces, or NNIs. Virtual connection. Connection between two endpoints is accomplished through transmission paths, or TPs, virtual paths, YPs, and virtual circuits, YCs. A transmission path, or TP, is the physical connection, wire, cable, satellite, and so on, between an endpoint and a switch, or between two switches. Think of two switches as two cities. A transmission path is the set of all highways that directly connect the two cities. Connection establishment and release. Like frame relay, ATM uses two types of connections, PVC and SVC. PVC is a permanent virtual circuit connection, which is established between two endpoints by the network provider. The VPIs and VCRs are defined for the permanent connections, and the values are entered for the tables of each switch. Switching. ATM uses switches to route the cell from a source endpoint to the destination endpoint. A switch routes the cell using both the VPIs and the VCIs. The routing requires the whole identifier. A cell with a VPI of 153 and a VCI of 67 arrives at switch interface port 1. ATM layer. The ATM layer provides routing, traffic management, switching, and multiplexing services. It processes outgoing traffic by accepting 48-byte segments from the AAL sublayers and transforming them into 53-byte cells by the addition of a 5-byte header. Header format. ATM uses two formats for this header one for user-to-network interface cells, and another for network-to-network -network interface, or NNI cells. These headers are in the byte-by-byte -byte format preferred by the ITU-T. ATM LANs. ATM is mainly a wide area network, WAN ATM. However, the technology can be adapted to local area networks, ATM LANs. The high data rate of the technology, 155 and 622 Mbps, has attracted the attention of designers who are looking for greater and greater speeds in LANs. ATM technology has several advantages that make it an ideal LAN. ATM technology supports different types of connections between two end users. It supports permanent and temporary connections. ATM technology supports multimedia communication with a variety of bandwidths for different applications. It can guarantee a bandwidth of several megabits per second for real-time video. It can also provide support for text transfer during off-peak hours. An ATM LAN can be easily adapted for expansion in an organization. ATM LAN architecture. There are two ways to incorporate ATM technology in LAN architecture. Pure ATM architecture. In a pure ATM LAN, an ATM switch is used to connect the stations in a LAN in exactly the same way stations are connected to an Ethernet switch. In this way, stations can exchange data at one of two standard rates of ATM technology, 155 and 652 Mbps. However, the station uses a virtual path identifier, or VPI, and a virtual circuit identifier, VEL, instead of a source and destination address. Legacy LAN architecture. A second approach is to use ATM technology as a backbone to connect traditional LANs. In this way, stations on the same LAN can exchange data at the rate and format of traditional LANs. Ethernet, token, ring, etc. But when two stations on two different LANs need to exchange data, they can go through a converting device 
that changes the frame format. The advantage here is that output from several LANs can be multiplexed together to create a high data rate input to the ATM switch. Let's discuss framing. Framing in the data link layer separates a message from one source to a destination or from other messages to other destinations by adding a sender address and a destination address. The destination address defines where the packet is to go. The sender address helps the recipient acknowledge the receipt. Fixed size framing. Frames can be of fixed or variable size. In fixed size framing, there is no need for defining the boundaries of the frames. The size itself can be used as a delimiter. An example of this type of framing is the ATM wide area network, which uses frames of fixed size called cells. Variable size framing. The main concern is variable size framing, prevalent in local area networks. In variable size framing, one needs a way to define the end of the frame and the beginning of the next. Historically, two approaches were used for this purpose, a character-oriented approach and a bit-oriented approach. Character-oriented protocols. In a character-oriented protocol, data to be carried are 8-bit characters from a coding system such as ASCII. The header, which normally carries the source and destination addresses and other control information, and the trailer, which carries error detection or error correction redundant bits, are also multiples of 8 bits. To separate one frame from the next, an 8-bit flag is added at the beginning and the end of a frame. Now we will learn about Link Management Ethernet. The data link layer defines a medium-independent link level communication facility built on the medium-dependent physical channel provided by the physical layer. It is applicable to a general class of local area broadcast media suitable for use with the channel access discipline known as Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection, CSMA-CD. The two main functions generally associated with a data link control procedure are data encapsulation, de-encapsulation. Framing means frame boundary delimitation. Addressing means handling of source and destination addresses. Error detection means detection of physical channel transmission errors. Link management. Channel allocation is collision avoidance. Contention resolution is collision handling. Now we will talk about local management interface. The local management interface, or LMI, is a set of extensions to the frame relay protocol that were designed to provide information about the status of frame relay networks and extend the technology's capabilities. LMI is primarily concerned with diagnostic functions. For example, LMI is used to send keep alive messages between a router and a frame relay switch. Both ANSI and the ITU-T have also developed LMI standards. An iOS version 11.2, a Cisco router interface using frame relay encapsulation, will auto-sense the LMI type used by a frame relay switch. However, it is still possible to configure the LMI type manually. The three different LMI types supported on a frame relay interface include Cisco. This is the group of four LMI type and is the default used on frame relay interfaces prior to iOS version 11.2. It uses DLCI 1023 to exchange status information. ANSI. This is the LMI type defined by ANSI. It uses DLCI0 to exchange status information. Q933A. This is the LMI type defined by the ITU-T. It uses DLCI0 to exchange status information. The LMI defines how the frame relay DTE and DCE interact with each other. 
It is management interface that gives the information about the status and other stuff. LMI message is served as keep lives between the DTE and DCE to exchange status information about the virtual circuit's devices for checking the connectivity. It communicates information about keep lives. These verify that data is flowing. Multicasting. This is an optional extension of the LMI specification that allows, for example, the efficient distribution of routing information and ARP requests over a frame relay network. Multicasting uses the reserved DCLIs from 1019 through 1022. Global addressing. This provides global significance to DLCIs allowing the frame relay cloud to work exactly like a LAN. Status of virtual circuits. This provides DLCI status. The status inquiries and messages are used as keep alives when there is no regular LMI traffic to send. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Frame relay operates in just the physical and data link layers. This means it can easily be used as a backbone network to provide services to protocols that already have a network layer protocol, such as the Internet. ATM provides data link layer services that run over OSI layer 1 physical links. ATM has functional similarity with both circuit switched networking and small packet switched networking. In a cell network, which uses the cell as the basic unit of data exchange, all data are loaded into identical cells that can be transmitted with complete predictability and uniformity. A transmission path, or TP, is the physical connection, wire, cable, satellite, and so on, between an endpoint and a switch or between, between two switches. Data transmission in the physical layer means moving bits in the form of a signal from the source to the destination. The physical layer provides bit synchronization to ensure that the sender and receiver use the same bit durations and timing.